The Bible tells us in the book of Timothy that, I suffer not a woman to teach nor use authority over the man. The Bible is specifically against women preaching in the church. There's no such thing as women bishops, women pastors, women evangelists and women apostles in the Bible. Church organizations started that stuff to use women because they are better fundraisers than men. So they let the women hold positions that violate the scriptures. Women can be doctors, lawyers, engineers, teachers and all of that but women and men have their perspective places in the scripture. In the second chapter in the book of Titus, it teaches that the aged women in the church, which are the mothers in the church, are to teach the young women. It also says a woman should be sober, chase, clean and to keep a good home. It goes further to teach how they should love their husbands. However, the mothers of today seem more interested in wearing the biggest hats, sometime blocking the light in church, than teaching their daughters. On the other hand, there are those who advocate for gender equality and religious leadership roles. They believe that women should be allowed to serve as preachers, pastors, and even as leaders in the church. They argue that biblical interpretations can vary, and that the Bible also contains passages emphasizing the equality of men and women in Christ, such as Galatians 3 and verse 28 which says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Some religious communities take a more progressive stance, seeking to reinterpret scriptures in a way that aligns with contemporary values of gender equality. They may argue that the cultural and historical context of certain scriptures should be considered when interpreting Bible, and that these passages should not be used to restrict women's roles in the church. They say that understanding the historical context is crucial when discussing these issues and that many religious traditions have evolved over time, and women's roles in the church have often been shaped by cultural and societal norms of the era. Some scholars argue that early Christian churches had more diverse roles for women, which changed as the church grew and adapted to different cultures. Some argue that interpreting scripture through a literal lens leads to restrictive roles for women. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 12 says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. In this verse, God restricts women from taking on teaching roles or positions of authority over men in the church. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 34-35 says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. This is a directive scripture for women to remain silent in church and not be in the pulpit preaching. Some argue that while certain passages in the Bible restrict women from preaching, the Bible also contains examples of strong and influential women, such as Deborah, Miriam, and Phoebe. They say that these examples demonstrate that women have played significant roles in biblical history. Another viewpoint of many women is that spiritual gifts and callings should determine leadership roles in the church, rather than gender. This perspective maintains that both men and women can be called to preach and lead based on their talents and spiritual gifting, as seen in passages like Acts chapter 2 verse 17 to 18, which speaks of both men and women prophesying. And it shall come to pass afterward, afterward. that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Then what? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. No, your sons and your daughters gonna preach. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They're gonna preach. They shall prophesy. Just say what the Bible says That's and right. stop right there. That's right. What many women fail to understand is that God is not against women prophesying, it is given to them to do that. What God is against is women interpreting scriptures in the form of teaching others. Pastor Derek Johnson of yes, uh, Joshua Harvest Church. Um, I, I agree with many things you say and, and, and study you often. However, I take exception, very honestly, to some things based on study. The notion of women, uh, preachers. Uh, I'm thinking of the Samaritan woman, though, who after her encounter with yeah. Jesus, Scripture does say that, in my mind, she preached because it says she went into the town she came from and many were saved because of the saying of the woman that she went back she basically in my mind became an evangelist come see a man who told me all i ever did is this not the messiah so there i would say is the first woman preacher okay. that i saw from my study that's the first question oh absolutely first and foremost the scripture says this 
I testify unto every man to hear the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and from things out of the holy city. First and foremost, there's a statement you keep making. You keep saying, in my mind, she preached. Your mind don't count. My mind don't count. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my way your way. The only way I would believe that she preached if the Bible said that. Another thing you did, you added to the scriptures. You said the scripture says she went and told the people and they were saved. The scripture never made no such statement. No, no, I said the exact, the exact scripture reference says, and many believed on him, okay. being Jesus. Thanks. Yes. Because of the saying of the woman. That's the exact quote of scripture. Right. That's when I said in my mind that's preaching because if a person go, uh, 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 is speaking to men about him mm -hmm. and they come to believe on him mm -hmm. because of that saying, then a, a, a brass monkey is preaching if well, he brings let, somebody to let Christ, us, let us as far as I'm the concerned. terms that the scripture said. The scripture says that she testified. So if a sister can talk to someone about Jesus and that individual believe, okay. that doesn't mean the sister preached. Okay. If the scriptures did not say she preached, I am not going to say she preached. Okay, so you mean the word, you, you, you I'm mean I'm just going to stick. The word I'm not going to add preached. nothing. I'm going to okay. leave it just like it is. But does, it, does the scripture you re reference also say, he who takes away from this writing one tittle, I will take his name away from the book of life. Meaning, okay. and I'm not suggesting in any way that your name be taken away. I'm sincere in my okay. question because I, I, I struggled with women preachers coming in and then that, that scripture, among others. So you, you, you've answered. So um, there would have to be Greek uh, and Hebrew uh, uh, interpretation that I'm not, I don't know okay. about the word. But I, again, my belief of, of her <coughs> preaching is based on that. They say the woman at the well preached, but she did not. What she did was testify of Jesus' goodness, just as many women do today. There's nothing wrong in testifying. Testifying simply means to bear witness of something. The scripture says, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man, which told me all things that ever I did, is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city, and came unto him. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, He told me all that ever I did. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. So, the woman testified of Jesus and many believed on him because of her testimony, but many more also believed because they heard him for themselves, not because of the woman's testimony. Paying preachers. Um, I've never taken a salary from my church uh, as such. However, and I believe you referenced the scripture that says consider the priest uh, by saying they were cared for. Norman uh, pointed out mm -hmm. that, you know, well, he used the word pay, but the fact of the matter is that they were cared for. In fact, God orders the people okay. to take care of the man of God. Mm -hmm. So are, are you saying that uh, you yourself in no way are provided for I got a job. by the church? I got a job. It, this is true, but are you saying you are in no way cared for by the church? I work. Church don't got to pay. The church don't have to take care of me. I got seven kids. Okay. And I'm, I'm not looking for the church to take care of my seven kids. Absolutely. I got a job. I work. I take care of my family. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Even the Bible point out the Apostle Paul occupation. Absolutely. And said he was a tent maker. I have met men that told me straight up the only reason why they got in the pulpit was because they couldn't find work. Yeah, yeah. Well, so they got in the there we agree, but I, I, I'm trying to, I, I'm, I want to know if you believe that, or if, you're, if you believe that, or you're saying that Scripture does not support the idea that the pastor should be cared for. When, when the Scripture says, consider the priest. Well, when you when, use the term, the preacher should, the pastor should. I don't mean in a, pay, I don't mean in a paycheck kind of way. I'm talking about what you were talking about. All right, about. so this, what is, why we call this parsonage. is why I'm asking for yeah. clarity. What we call parsonage, what we call uh, caring for. I'm a full-time 
pastor, meaning okay. 12 tonight, if 2 in the morning, and the entire Wilmington, so what is your explanation knows. of being cared for? What do you mean? Because when I you mean, say cared for, yeah, a whole I don't lot mean, of I don't mean, I don't mean support my children. I mean care for the priest. I mean that that man's uh, um, uh, gas, transportation, etc., to go to their homes two o'clock in the morning. The, the the things that that priest needs uh, in order to be a priest. From because, that perspective, yes. for the church to help them and transportation and doing the Lord's work, fine. Absolutely. So, which is okay. a very, uh, so when you use the term care for, that has a very broad statement. Absolutely. Because uh, a lot of preachers feel as though when you say cared for, that means buy him cars, that means buy him houses, right. and things of that nature. It is difficult to disagree with you, Pastor, because everything that you say is rooted in truth. Geno Jennings preaches that pastors should not be paid to preach. He teaches that they must get a job and go to work and that members of the church should not buy them houses, cars or send their kids to school. He is against pastors receiving a salary or financial support from their congregations. He believes that pastors should work secular jobs to support themselves and their families, emphasizing that preaching should be a calling, not a means of livelihood. There are many who agree with Geno Jennings, and they share the belief that this approach keeps pastors humble, and prevents them from using their positions for personal gain. They argue that pastors should lead by example, showing dedication to both spiritual and worldly responsibilities. Pastors should not burden their congregations with the financial responsibility of providing them with houses, cars, or funding their children's education. On the other hand, there are those who disagree with Geno Jennings' teachings. They argue that pastors should be compensated for their work, as preaching and ministering to a congregation is a full-time job that requires dedication and time. They believe that paying pastors allows them to focus on their spiritual duties without the distraction of secular work. Additionally, some argue that supporting pastors financially is a way for congregations to express their gratitude and commitment to their spiritual leaders. Those who advocate for paying pastors often point to passages in the New Testament, such as 1 Timothy 5 verse 17 to 18, which says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treateth out the corn. And, the laborer is worthy of his reward. They argue that these verses support the idea of providing financial support to pastors. They will say that the size and financial capacity of a church can influence its ability to compensate pastors. Larger congregations with more resources may be better equipped to provide salaries and benefits, while smaller churches might find it more challenging. Different Christian denominations have varying traditions regarding pastoral compensation. Some denominations have a formalized system for paying pastors, while others adhere to the same biblical belief of Pastor Jennings, that pastors should work secular jobs to provide for themselves and their families. Pastors who receive a salary argue that they have more time to dedicate to their congregation's spiritual needs, while those who work secular jobs may have limited availability. In conclusion to leadership in the church, and pastors being paid to preach, Many contemporary Christian theologians and denominations hold the belief that gender should not determine leadership roles in the church, and they support the idea that women can serve as pastors and hold leadership positions. They argue that gender should not be a barrier to serving as a pastor or in any leadership role within the church. Proponents of this view argue that God's call to leadership is based on individual gifts, character, and calling rather than gender. Many churches believe that spiritual gifts and a clear calling from God should be the primary factors in determining someone's suitability for leadership in the church. They point to passages like Romans 12 verse 6 to 8 and 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 to 11, which emphasize that God distributes spiritual gifts to both men and women for the edification of the church. Supporters of women preachers often highlight examples of women who played certain roles in the Bible. They use these scriptures to justify women preachers, but the Bible did not say any of them preach. Some argue that certain passages in the Bible that seem to restrict women's preaching the Word of God should be understood within their historical and cultural context. They suggest that the early church faced unique challenges and that the cultural norms of that time influenced some of the directives. They say that in today's context, where gender equality is valued, these interpretations should be reconsidered. Because they want to promote gender equality, many churches have adapted their practices and policies to reflect these changes. They believe that the church should be a place that exemplifies gender equality and inclusivity. They argue that many churches led by women pastors have seen tremendous growth and spiritual transformation in their congregations. 
This challenges traditional beliefs about gender roles in the church and supports the idea that women can effectively lead and pastor congregations. A growing number of churches now believes that the traditional view of men as the sole heads of the church and women's exclusion from pastoral roles does not align with their understanding of God's calling and equality. They emphasize spiritual gifting, individual calling, and historical context when considering leadership roles in the church, allowing women to serve as pastors and in other leadership capacities. These beliefs are part of a broader movement toward more inclusive and egalitarian approaches to church leadership. Many women have pursued theological education and ministerial training, demonstrating their commitment and readiness to serve as pastors. This investment they believe equips them with the knowledge and skills necessary for effective pastoral leadership. Numerous women pastors are fighting to prove themselves in pastoral roles, they try hard to demonstrate that they have the ability to effectively preach, teach, counsel, and lead congregations. Many women preachers argue that their ministries have often resulted in positive spiritual growth and community impact, further challenging traditional gender-based restrictions. Several churches have undergone shifts in their positions and policies to become more inclusive. They have re-evaluated and revised the doctrine to allow women to serve as pastors, elders, and in other leadership positions within the church. It's essential to recognize that beliefs about women in pastoral roles vary widely among different churches, and not all churches or individuals hold these views. The ongoing conversation about women's roles in the church continues to evolve as theological perspectives, societal norms, and cultural contexts change over time. Many churches today believe that the full inclusion of women in leadership roles is not only biblically justifiable but also crucial for the vitality and growth of the church. In regards to pastors being paid to preach, this should not be happening. Gino Jennings teaches from the scriptures that pastors should not be paid to preach and should instead have secular jobs to support themselves. He teaches that pastors should lead by example, working alongside their congregations, and should not receive financial benefits like houses, cars, or funding for their children's education from church members. This perspective emphasizes humility and dedication in ministry, with pastors not relying on their roles for personal gain. Others believe that compensating pastors is a way to support their full-time ministry and express gratitude. In the end, it's the Word of God that counts. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.